Sounds good. Okay. So uh, welcome back uh, from the <laughs> from the from the break that we had because of the time change. Um, we are going to be discussing, let me show you here, okay? Last time, uh, we were discussing chapter six, okay? We see it's uh, titled Linear Model Selection and Regularization. Uh, we talk about subset selection uh, using stepwise, forward, uh, backward, and also uh, kind of exhaustive, you know, uh, all, the, all the possible uh, combinations that usually is not the best approach. <laughs> it, it takes, you know, a, a lot of uh, time and computer resources. Then we talk about the shrinker methods, which are really the regularization methods. We talk about ridge regression. We talk about the lasso. Uh, the lasso has the particularity that it can be used for feature selection because uh, it will, it will um, uh, tend, you know, to uh, get some of the... Uh, you know some of the predictors, uh, they will get to a to a zero uh, coefficient. Okay, which, pro, you know, it it uh, it discards those uh, predictors, and uh, then we talk about dimension reduction methods. We talk about principal components regression (PCR), and also we call we talk about PLS, which are PLS is based on PCA principal components analysis, but it uses a target. Okay, so it's a supervised learning just using the PCA, all right? So I chose uh, number, the applied exercise number nine, all right? So applied exercise number nine is right here, all right? And this exercise, uh, it uses the college uh, data set that comes, you know, with the uh, ISLP library and also the ISLR library. And what we're going to do is apply some of the theory that we learned in that chapter to this uh, data set. And we're going to follow each of these steps. So let's start. Uh, so the first thing is that you have to, you know, load some libraries, right? So in Python, usually you, you load the, the NumPy to environment, the Pandas uh, library, you know, the usual suspects, Matplotlib, uh, Seaborn, because it's easier to do the, the visualizations. And also I just add some things that are usually annoying, especially the warnings. So I do an import warnings uh, library to filter those uh, those warnings and then uh, set up the, the figure size that we're going to be, to be using. All right, so we're going to uh, load that for environment. And then we're going to be using extensively here, uh, scikit-learn, all right? So in that <laughs> in that chapter six uh, GitHub uh, repo, I also uh, added some documentation for scikit-learn, which is the uh, de facto uh, library for, for machine learning uh, in Python. A very extensive library is always on development and is uh, very uniform, you know, to do certain things that you will see that are going to get kind of repeated, repetitive. So we're going to use from scikit-learn the pipeline uh, module, make pipeline, and I'll explain why. Then we're going to use the pre-processing module. We're going to use the standard scaler because we have to scale our predictors uh, for the, the algorithm. Then from linear model package, we're going to import the linear regression, the lasso uh, cross-validation, and the rich cross-validation, you know, to implement the lasso and the rich regressions. Then the metrics, which is going to be mean square error, MSE, and also uh, we're going to use uh, R2 square, the R2, uh, R, R, R square methodology. All right. So let's load that. And also, I needed to check this, uh, the Pandas version, because Pandas version 2, the, 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 the version 2 and subsequent, I think that they're in 2.1, whatever, uh, they did a couple of changes in some of, the, some of the functions. And for example, one function that it was used extensively uh, before version 2 
was uh, the the append the append uh, you know uh, class. Uh, it, this deprecated in version two. So instead of append, you have to use concat. Okay. So some of the solutions that you're going to see prior to version two that you probably will include a pen because it was very uh, very extensive use, uh, you know, to get new elements to, to the data frame, for example. Now they deprecated that in version two and uh, you have to use concat. But that's why I'm using a previous version in, in this case, 1.5.3 to, you know, Keep using that pen if it's if it, if it's there, all right. So I don't have to use you know to do that that much hacking. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right. So now we're going to be uh, uh, reading our data set, the college data set. Okay, and we're going to do the pd dot read underscore csv, which is the function from pandas to read a csv uh, files, and also notice that I'm using an argument here called in this column. So it's going what it's, it's, it's doing is that it's going to use a column from, you know, when it reads the, 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 the whole data frame, it's going to use the column as an index. And this column is going to be the name of the university. Since the name of the university is not really, you know, a predictor, right? It just, it's just a label, a text. So you we can use this you can use it as the index. So then you have all the columns that you're going to use are the predictors for the target, all right? So here we are, this is our data set, right? And uh, just to make sure that we understand uh, some of the things that are happening here, I included the data set dictionary, with, with, which it comes from the package ISLR, okay, the R package. So let me just copy this. Uh, let me see. Let me just copy. Uh, yeah. Let me just copy this uh, link to give you uh, an idea of what is the definition of those uh, of those columns. Okay. So in this. Uh, the college data set is the source is the U.S. News and World uh, Reports college data. Uh, it's a data set that has 777 observations that includes 18 columns or 18 variables. And these are the variables, okay? The target that we're going to be, you know, dealing with is the apps, which is the number of applications received. So anytime that you have a doubt in terms of what is the meaning of that of each each of the columns? You know, this is the reference that you should be using. Okay. All right. So now that we are getting to know a little bit more about the data set, I want to always see uh, using the info, right? This info for, for you know uh, from the data frame. I want to see, uh, you know. How many how many uh, columns do I have? Are there any missing values? And you will see that there's a way you know to try to figure out that without any any other functions. It gives you seven hundred seventy seven entries right in the index. If you see a number that is less than that here in one of the columns, that means that probably that column has you know missing values NANs in this case in Python. Uh, apparently, none of them have, but we're going to make sure uh, using e e is no, we're going to make sure that no none of the columns uh, have missing values, and that's important because in a regression, you know that it doesn't accept any any missing values. It throws an error, and also the D type. The D type is the data type. So here in the data type, you see that most of them are numeric, right? Uh, numeric uh, types integers, uh, float, etc. The only one that really is kind of a categorical is private. And we'll see what is the content of private. So let's try to make sure that our data set is in good shape, uh, you know, to apply it to each of the, 
each of the methods of, of, the, of, of the algorithms that we're going to be using. So the first thing that I do is uh, try to check if there are any du duplicated uh, entries, okay? And with this, what it does is that when you apply this to a data frame, duplicated uh, parentheses, um, what it does is that it gives you a true or false, right? A, a Boolean, a Boolean uh, 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 result. And if it's true, that means that there's, there's a, a row duplicated somewhere in that data frame. In other words, two rows or more have the same formation. So what we're going to do here is apply the duplicate, true or false, and then do the sum. And what it's going to do is that it's going to give you, if the data frame has a duplicate entry, it's going to be more than zero, okay? Because of the sum, because of the true values. If they are all false, that means that the sum is zero. False, sorry, zero, true one. Okay, so we run this, we see that they're not duplicated. So that's the first you know, good news about these data. The second one is to verify the missing values. We already, you know, Kind of eyeball it here, right? With the info. And most of them have the same entries as the total entries of the data frame. So you probably you won't have any missing values, but, but let's make sure of it. So to verify these missing values, you can use the same technique as duplicates, but instead of duplicated, we're going to use is not, right? And it's going to give you a Boolean again. If there's a missing value, it's going to give you a true. If there's a missing value, it's going to give you a false. Then we're going to submit. But if you sum it to this to this level, it's going to give you all the columns and the missing values that are in each column. And I want to do is kind of a you know big sweep of, of the whole data frame. So I'm going to add another sum here. So it's going to do the sum of the columns, the columns and the sum of them. If they're zero, that means that there shouldn't be any missing values. So let's check. Okay, and ex exactly as we as we expected. No missing values, all right? So let's try to see more or less numerically Ricardo? what is... Uh -huh. Go ahead. I just wanted to confirm. So you're saying the first sum sums each column and then the second yeah. sum sums the whole, like the whole thing. Correct, yes. Let, okay. let, let, me, let, let me give you the whole process. If, if, if I do this, it's null, right? L look what it's going to give me. It's going to give me the whole data frame, right? Which is column. And it's going to give me a false if there's not a, a missing value or a true if there is a missing value, okay? So when I do sum, right? The first sum is going to add each of the columns and it's going to sum all those Boolean uh, you know, uh, results. So false is zero and true is one. So if there's a missing value, it's going to be true. So it's going to be added to that sum. So let's check it out, okay? So you see that I have all the columns and I have all zeros, right? But what I'm interested in is if you see if there's any missing value anywhere in that uh, uh, data frame. So I repeat that and what I get is the sum of those columns, which is zero, okay? It's a nifty way, you know, in, in Python, you have to really uh, play with those uh, Booleans. Uh, results because usually that's how you know pandas and python uh, usually present you know the information okay okay so let's keep going and I, I just want to see more or less you know what is the what, what am i dealing with okay so most of the columns are uh, numeric right so we can use this you know uh, pandas uh, function called describe and describe is just like summary in R. It's going to give you some information of the numeric uh, column about the mean, about the standard deviation, the mean, the max, the percentiles, et cetera, okay? And I'm going to also transpose that because it's easier. If I don't transpose it, look, look what happens, okay? so. The, the the vertical is going to be the labels, right? The count, the mean, the standard deviation, but then I have all these uh, columns, you know, for, for each, each of those values. So it, it's easier, if you transpose it, it's easier to read. Okay, so now I have count as my headers, and then I have in the vertical, I have all my columns. Let's see 
what do we notice about apps? All right, so apps is our target. That is a numeric target. It's the number of applications for each of these colleges. Uh, what do you see if you compare the mean of apps with the 50% uh, uh, percentile? What do you notice? They're not the same. Right. And are they equal? Well, they're not the same, right? They're not equal. But the mean is way higher than the 50%, right? That 50 percentile is the median, is the midpoint, right? Of all those observations, you know, ranked from minimum to maximum value. So what do you think that tells you when the median is way lower than the mean? What does it tell you? I'm trying to forget which way, but basically it's skewed. I forget it's skewed, if it's right? right or left. Yeah. yeah, you're right. In this case, it's right skewed because there's going to be like a right tail, right? Right tail along, along the, the, you know, the right side of, of that curve. So in other words, this is not a Gaussian distribution. This is not a Gaussian distribution, and that could be uh, something to consider, okay? So you can check all of them, but I think it's better if we can visualize it, right? Because with the numbers, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's not apparent what, is, what the distribution is like for these columns. So there's a nifty uh, function from pandas called hist, okay? And what it's going to do is the same thing like the descriptive statistics describe, but in this case, it's going to take all the numeric columns and it's going to plot a histogram for each of them. Okay, very nice. All right, so this is the shape of each of the distribution for each of those numeric. The only one that is not here is private because private is, is an object, it's, it's not numeric, it's categorical. So as you can see, apps is why very skewed, right? Okay, you have basically all those, you know, uh, uh, values uh, less than the mean. So it's kind of right skewed. And you see accept, you see enroll, you see there are a lot of them that are, you know, uh, right skewed in this case. So this could inform you that maybe in real life, we're not going to do it in this exercise, but in real life, you should be thinking of, wait, maybe I should transform this, right? For example, the apps. Maybe, maybe it needs transformation to get a more Gaussian because linear regression, logistic regression, uh, KNN, et cetera, expect some of those uh, 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 columns in a Gaussian distribution, normal distribution, okay? So this that's something that you should be you know, aware of it. So let's continue and uh, let's deep dive on apps because apps is the target. So we have to understand, you know, what's going on with apps and, you know, what kind of things we could do. So another way to visualize the distribution of this, you know, uh, target, the continuous variable is using a box plot, right? And in the box plot, the good thing is that, for example, in the histogram, you kind of not, cannot see because of the, of the scale, you cannot see more or less where the outliers are. But in the block, uh, the box plot, you can see very clear, okay? Because it goes beyond the lower or the upper whiskers, right? And if we run it, we'll see that most of these values right here on top of the upper whisker, uh, those are your outliers. And I put a comment here, there's a lot of them, okay? Especially this one, which is kind of, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of, you know, get, gets, gets out there. Okay, this is a nasty one <laughs> here. Okay, and you and you'll see what happens when you do the splitting of the train of the data saving to train and test. You should be aware of where this outlier is going to be. Okay, because it's going to it can, it can mess you the the metrics. All right. So what happens when we log transform that 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 target? In other words, you know we we apply a log transformation. And in this case, we can do the basic log, not the one adding, you know, one or anything, because the minimum is 81 here. So all the values here are positive, right? 
So when you apply the log, now things kind of, you know, are a little bit different. Okay, so now we don't see that many outliers. In fact, we only see that one, right? The, the, the one that, you know, got away, <laughs> more or less. Okay, so we should be thinking about, you know, do, doing kind of an experiment, another experiment, you know, uh, doing that log transformation. Okay, and if we do the histogram of that, uh, of that log, log transform or apps, now it's kind of more of a Gaussian, right? A bell curve, uh, you know, not exactly, right? But it has a better shape than the one skew. Okay. So we got an idea of what apps looks like and, you know, we should do a log transform or not. Then let's check the private, which is the only, the only uh, uh, categorical uh, variable that we have. And we see that this categorical, when you, you use the value counts, uh, a function from pandas, only to private, we see that it's a binary. Really, it's a binary um, uh, uh, column, a uh, variable. So it has a yes and it has a no. In other words, is the college is private or is not private, all right? And you see the counts, you know, 565 out of 777 and 212. If you want to get the percentage, you can do this. Okay, there's an argument in value counts called normalize. You usually, usually it's false, uh, the default is false. But then if you change it to true, look what happens. Ah, now we got the percentages, which is more informative than usually the counts. Because 565 could be a big number, could be a small number, depending on the whole, right? So in this case, it's about 73% are private and 27, 28%, 27% are, are not. Okay, so for our models, we have to change that object into numeric. And there's many ways to do it. Uh, there's a function in Pandas called get dummies that it will change all your uh, categorical uh, objects to numeric using one hold encoding. In this case, I don't think we should use it because there's, it's only one object that we're dealing. So this is a neat, neat trick here, a neat hack. We're going to say that for all the college private that is yes, that's going to return a Boolean result again of one, right? Of, of true, right? If, if, if it's yes, it is true. And we're going to change it to an integer, okay? So that true is going to be, the yeses are going to be one, and the noes are going to be zero. And that's how you change a binary categorical into numeric, okay? So when we do that, and we do the, the, the command head, we see that our privates now are numeric. So now, you know, we already converted that. So at least, you know, that part, is done. Then one more thing, now that we have private numeric, let's see how the correlations uh, between each of these uh, 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 columns, you know, uh, uh, are, you know, uh, they, they, they are. So in this one, okay, and this is also another, another hack here in mask for this uh, Seaborn, uh, uh, Seaborn plot, which is the heat map, all right. Uh, here, I'm not going to. I'm not showing you the upper triangle of the of the correlation uh, or the correlogram, uh, and also on and and either the the diagonal, the one. So this mass is really you know very uh, uh, nifty to try to get the information in a visual way that you know you can perceive it uh, better. So in this case, for example, we see that apps has a couple of high correlations between some of the columns, like accept, enroll, and uh, F undergrad. Okay, you have to check the dictionary to see you know, what, what is that, that about. But apart from apps, which is the target, also we see high correlations between the predictors. And ha that, that has to raise some alarms, especially in a linear regression model. Why? Because that is called multicollinearity. 
when two predictors have a high correlation, they tend to inflate the uh, coefficients, the estimates, okay? And that's one of the things that the regularization really tries to, you know, try, tries to uh, attack, okay? Or to lower uh, that inflationary, uh, you know, result, okay? So for example, uh, top 25% and here uh, they have an 89%. Uh, also, I remember PhD, okay, PhD and terminal, the terminal degree also have a high uh, high correlation. So those could be, you know, could be could be trouble, okay, for our multiple linear regression model, okay? So the comment that I have here is because of the presence of multiple predictors, high dimensionality, there are various features that exhibit high correlation. That is, multicollinearity is present, okay? Um, any, any comments or uh, questions? None for me. Okay, good. Okay, so that was our, you know, exploratory, right? Exploratory uh, phase, which is always something good, you know, to, to do. Because then you you get a better sense of where could be some of the problems that you are going to face, you know, when when you model uh, this this data. All right. So let's start now answering the the exercises questions. The first question is to split the data set into a training test, a training set, a training set, and a test set. Okay. So we're going to use from model selection module, uh, Scikit-Learn. We're going to do the train test split, okay? And we're going to just load it there. And then we're going to create two, uh, two data frames. One that has all the predictors, which we call X, you know, capital, uh, cap, uh, uh, uppercase X. And then the other one is going to be Y, which is the target, okay? And the way you do it is that you drop the target, okay, from the original uh, data frame. and you uh you know you store it in x and then you assign y the target all right good okay one thing that i notice is that uh when you when you are going to do the the the, the split on the training and test set usually is 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 a it's a good practice to try to get the same distribution of the target for the training set and the testing set, okay? So for example, if our target was a categorical, let's say that we convert that apps into a categorical value and we assign, okay, more than, you know, more than the mean is going to be one and less than the mean is going to be a zero, okay? So what you want to do is to have the same counts or the same percent count of the training set or that target into the test set. Why? Because remember that the training set is going to be learning from, uh, the model is going to be learning from the training set and it's going to apply it to the test set. So one of the things that you could do, you know, to try to get a better metric is to try to stab stabilize that distribution from the training set of the of the target and the test and the distribution of the, of the target on the test set, all right? But what happens? Train the, the this function train test split has the argument of stratify for you know doing that, but the problem is that stratify only works for categorical variables. We have to do a little hack in order to get a continuous variable in there into the stratify uh, uh, argument. Okay, and the way to do it is following this uh, uh, stack exchange, uh, you know, uh, uh, post that they were asking the same thing. And what we're going to do is that we're going to bin the target, the apps, we're going to bin it, okay? And those bins are going to be used then to stratify the training and the test set, which is a very elegant solution, okay? I'm not going to go into the details on the on the functions, but it's already there in the in the link and the explanation is in the link too, okay? So these are, these are our bins, okay? From zero to 111, 111 to 22, 22, 333, and so forth until the max, you know, uh, column. Then we're going to create the Y bins, which is the digitize the Y using those bins. And then 
we're going to do the split with this stratification, okay? Which is using those bins of Y to stratify. And you'll see what is the result when I plot the density, the distribution density of the targeting train and the targeting Y in, 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 in test, okay? So let's do this. We got the split, okay? This is our training set with 543 observations, 17, right? 17, 17 columns because the, 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 the target is not, is not there, it's, it's in Y. And then 234 for the test. Now, when we plot to make sure that we have kind of a similar uh, distribution, uh, we plot the density, the, what is called the kernel density of each of these apps. It's not you know, e identical, equal, but at least it has the same shape. And that's what we're looking for, okay? If we don't use this, uh, we leave it, you know, we leave it to, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, to the, to the chance, to chance, in terms of how the distribution is going to be. So always it's a good practice to try to use that stratify to get the same proportion, especially when your data set the class is in balance. Okay, it's very important. All right. So now that we already have our split, we're going to then fit a linear model using the least squares, which is the ordinary, right, uh, uh, linear regression. So the way that we're going to do it is very interesting. And I have, you should look at this uh, article, which is Build Better Regression Models with Lasso. Uh, it's in the, it's in the notebook, okay, is this, is, is this one? Build Better Regression Models with Lasso. So the way, that scikit-learn uh, tells you how to do the pre-processing, uh, how to apply the algorithm that of your choice is by using pipelines, okay? So what pipelines does is that it combines a pre-processing uh, scheme, uh, just like if, if, if you are aware with tidy models, this is like a recipe, okay? In terms that it combines the transformations, and also it combines the application to the algorithm. It's very, you know, it's, 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 it's very minimalistic, okay, here. So the, the way that you're going to do it is that, remember that instruction of make pipeline that we loaded, uh, you know, when we were loading the libraries? That's the one that is going to combine the preprocessing that we need, which is standard scalar. You cannot order preprocessing instead. For example, you cannot also uh, 100 encoding, uh, robust scalar, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, functions that are in scikit-learn. But in this one, we only need this one, standard scalar, because already we already have the, the category called private as a numeric. So we have all numerics. So if you run this and you fit X train, your training set with your Y train, which is the target, they're going to get this, uh, uh, this object, okay, which is the fitting of this linear regression. So far, we haven't done anything. We haven't done any transformation or anything. So what do we want? We want to then apply this model, the pipeline model, to the test set. And how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to do it this way, okay? We're going to do it with the metric, with the white test, and then we're going to do linear regression that model that we created, we're going to predict on the X, X uh, uh, the, the, the test set, okay? The X test. And we're going to round it. So this is going to give you out of the bat the metric of that of that model. And if we run this, this is the metric, okay? 966,414. Why the, num the, the, the number is, is, is big? It's because we're using the mean square error. So we are squaring all those errors and adding it up, okay? If you want to use the RMSE, root mean square error, what you're going to do is square this, okay? Or as, uh, you know, get the square root, sorry. Square root of that mean square error. And it's going to give you the RMSE, which is a lower number, and it's an easier number to, to manage. But let's, let's uh, stick with the, 
MSE. Okay, so now let's see how the coefficients you know, are doing. So with this uh, instructions, right? You know, and this uh, function coef uh, underscore, we can uh, retrieve some of uh, all the coefficient estimates for all the predictors. So if we run this, you get this are the coefficient estimates for the predictors. As you can see, we don't have any uh, confidence intervals, et cetera. Scikit-learn doesn't, doesn't give you that, okay? Uh, you'll have to then you know, use SAS model or use SciPy, another uh, big library in Python to calculate those. So, but right now, what we want to do is try to compare this with the other models that we're going to be uh, uh, you know, uh, execute, okay? Everyone here with me? Still here. Good. Okay, so th that that is a it's a very uh, you know compact uh, way you know to try to run this uh, algorithms. Uh, usually, what I did before was uh, you know run the standard scalar first and then apply it to a linear regression. But I think this method is kind of you know uh, you know is 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 very efficient. Let's put it that way. Okay, so now we're going to apply the regression model. And as you can see, the only thing that we're going to change here in the make pipeline is the algorithm. Okay, so instead of linear regression, now we're going to use rich CV with their the defaults. Okay, so now we're going to run that. Bam, we got the object. And then let's see how we can get that metric, which is the same way. Okay, we're going to apply the mean square error. And then we're going to apply the rich CV, which is this object here. And we're going to predict on the test set and compare it with the with the target. Okay. So in this case, we got MSE, which is lower than the original one that we had with the linear regression, 962,000. So we're going in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a good path. Okay, that our models are improving uh, that that metric. What is the alpha of Ridge? Because rich regression, the, the parameter is alpha. So here, because we we did, you know, we don't see it, but we did a cross-validation, right? Uh the parameter is 0.1. Okay. And it's already there in that in that model. So let's compare those uh coefficients, the rich regression with the linear regression. So when we run this and we compare this with that, we see that some of them, okay, have lower estimates. Okay. Not all of them, but some of them have lower estimates. So the rich regression is trying to, you know, kind of deflate uh, those multicollinear uh, features uh, that have a high correlation, try to, you know, temper down those. Okay. Now let's do the lasso regression. This one is really interesting because this one could, you know, eliminate some of the some of the features. So you get not only the, you know, the 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 deflated uh, uh, kind of deflation of the estimates, but also the feature selection. The same thing, make pipeline standard, standard scalar and use the lasso CV, right? Okay, let's do the mean square error and we get a 902. Wow, that was really low, okay? compared to the rich regression, which was 962, all right? So this is, this is look, it, it looks promising. Let's check the alpha, and the alpha here is 3.768, you know, whatever. And these are your coefficients here. And as you can see, most of them are here, you know, there's no zeros, but then the estimates, the magnitude of them have changed. For example, in their, uh, rich regression, you have for accept, which was one of the multi multicollinearity problem, we have 4118. Here, we have 462. Okay, and so on. So, right now, this model is the one that is winning, you know, the, the competition, right? From the linear regression and also from the rich regression. Uh, let's do a plot, okay, to compare. Uh, because it's not easier to compare these numbers 
with uh, the other models. Let's do this plot to compare the coefficient estimates of each of the three models. And as you can see, usually the lasso uh, model has the least magnitude, right? The lower magnitude of each of the coefficients. The higher magnitude is the regression and then in between is the, is the rich regression, okay? And you can see here, I just printed out for you, you know, the three metrics. So you can see it in one, in one uh, window that basically lasso is the one that is the lower right now. Okay. Any comments? Questions? None for me. Okay, good, good. Okay. So let's go now to the principal components regression, right? Which is uh, kind of a, uh, uh, a supervised uh, learning model. So for this, we're going to use the scale, right? Uh, we're going to use the model selection, which is the KFO, KF. And we're going to do the decomposition module. We're going to import PCA. So here, we're going to do the PCA, right? Okay, with all the you know all the all the all the all the components. Uh, this is the data frame you know for that particular uh, PCA, and then we're going to do here with uh, the PCR. We have to see what is the M. Okay, with M is the number of components that give the lowest cross validation error. So we're going to pour, import the cross validation score. Uh, we're going to do some, you know, some of this, uh, you know, uh, instantiate some of these elements, for example, linear regression, et cetera. And then we're going to run this four. This four is the one that is going to give us kind of the metric, the MSE, and you are going to see which one is the lowest. Okay. So let's run this. Okay. And right now, if we plot it, because it's not apparent, but apparently this one is the is the lowest, the number 17. But if we plot it, you will see that the lowest MSC, right? That's the metric that we're trying to, you know, uh, minimize is going to be right at the end, okay? So what it means is that 17 M is going to be the 17, okay? Another plot for the uh, uh, variance ratio explanation Okay, it's right there. And you'll see that the one that explains the most is the 17, okay? Uh, so can you go back up to uh -huh. the top of it, the beginning? What was that again? Yeah. Oh no, I wanted to see the big, yeah, the beginning of this one. I mm -hmm. to see something. Okay, if you could scroll down. Just trying to wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this is based. This is based on PCA. Okay, the yeah, yeah, yeah. regression is based on on, on 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 PCA. The problem is that because there is no there's no target here, uh, yeah. you're going to see what's go, what what is going to happen. Okay, which is not a best yeah. best result. Okay, yeah. so now that we have our M right, so now we're going to use it. Right, we're going to use it uh, to perform the PCR the PCR in the test sets. So this is basically what you know we're going to do. We're going to do the, the instantiate of the PCA. We're going to you know transform the X train with the PCA. Then we're going to use this linear regression, right? Okay. And then we're going to uh, use those uh, principal components as the predictors for our target using linear regression. Okay, which is basically the same thing that we did when we were trying to look for the for the M. Okay, so we're going to run this. This is the MSE. This is the plot, right? With the principal components, now that is 17. Uh, the variance ratio, you know, it's like a scree plot here of the principal components. And now we're going to see, apply it to the test, and we'll see uh, what is the metric? You know, what is the metric that PCR is giving us applying those principal components? Okay. And as you can see, that number is really high. Okay. It's not 900, it's 9,000 <laughs> here. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I put a comment here. So far, 
PCR has produced the largest MSE amongst all models used. So this is not a good model, <laughs> all right? And, you know, you, you, usually it's not because uh, he doesn't have any idea of, you know, what the target is. That, that's the problem, okay? You know, you are just, you know, using the PCAs uh, as an unsupervised learning and then apply it to the target. Usually that, that won't give you the best results, okay? Then on our last question, I think, and, and 9F, we're going to do partial least squares. And this one incorporates the target, okay? Which is something that is uh, crucial in this case, because this is a supervised you know, learning uh, 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 problem. So here, scikit-learn in cross decomposition module has the PLS regression as PLS. That's the partial uh, least squares uh, model. Okay, so we're going to do the same same here. Okay, we're going to instantiate uh, our you know uh, our objects etc. and run uh, uh, you know the, the model the PLS model to see how many components do we need to minimize our metric, which is MSE. So I'm going to run that, and according to the plot, okay, our minimize function is going to be around here, okay? Uh, I think the one that is minimize is the min of this, you know, this vector, this list here is this figure here, okay? 1.567104. If you look at this, 1.567104 is this. And it corresponds to when K, the number of components is 11. So that's the one that we're going to be using, okay? Uh, this is the plot for a, a variance explain. As you can see, you know, it doesn't tell you that much because it's just a straight, a straight line, okay? So now, because we have from this plot, Okay, we have our min, which is 11. That's the number of components that we need to minimize our, you know, our MSE. We're going to apply, okay, to the train set and then get the metric from the test set. Okay, and boom, this is the MSE. Uh, not too shabby, okay, because still it's a, it's a big number. It's more than, you know, our lasso and rich regressions, but still is significantly less than the P PCR. Okay, so now we have all our models, right? That's the last uh, exercise. Let's compare this to the different models. And this will show you, uh, sorted by MSC, which of the models are, are the best. And as you can see, lots of regression so far wins the day. Okay, if you plot it, it's always easier to figure out. This is lots of regression is the one that is the best model so far for this data set. Okay. And basically that's it for, for that exercise. What do you think? So I didn't get to read the, the chapter, but I'm wondering, did it say anything about like, like choosing how many predictors? Because even from like, say the last one we did where it was um mm -hmm. the pls like right. at some if you can go back to let me see the pls where it's yeah uh, actually yeah go right. up a little little bit yeah so where where we have the msc and although the lowest is when we have like 11 predictors i feel like it's not even that far off from seven and like the idea of how much is gained by adding more predictors. Is that something that they talked about at all? Or? Well, remember that with the PCA, when, 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 when you transform your, your data frame, right? Your columns, your variables into a PCA, those PCAs have all the, all, all the columns, okay? The only thing that changes is the loadings of each of the principal components. But from that 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 uh, you know that step, you start using the components, and you don't use directly your your variables. Okay, so what happens is that 
you have to define how many components do I need to capture most of the variation that it was already there in that original uh, data frame. So let's say that you have 10 uh, principal components. Those 10 components are going to give you the whole variation of your original uh, data frame. But what happens is that you want to use less of them because you want to do a dimensionality reduction. So if you see that with three or four or five, you get, let's say 90% of your uh, uh, you know, explained variation, then that's what you need, okay? So you only need five components and then you can uh, you know, use them you know, for linear regression or for anything else that you want to mimic the original, the original data set, okay? In this case, what we're doing, because we're in the scikit-learn world, what we're doing is trying to minimize that metric, the MSC that we, you know, that we chose to try to see how many components do I need to get that minimum uh, MSE? Okay, and then I use that number of components to then uh, model my my uh, my data frame with those components. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I guess, mm -hmm. do you have the like when you did the final, I guess, comparison? Do you, do you have the option to choose which of the, like, instead of choosing the minimum, could you have chosen, like, which one you preferred, kind of? Uh, yeah, you can is... use, uh, for example, you can use R-square. R-square mm -hmm. is going to be the maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so instead of MSC, the minimum square error, you can use R-square, okay? And then putting that R-square is going to be the maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. And probably it, it will give you a different a different outlook. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. All righty. So I think with this exercise, uh, you know, we saw more or less, you know, how to apply it in the Python scikit learn, you know, universe, how to apply the lasso, how to apply the rich regression. You see with the make pipelines is very uh is 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 very efficient, okay, to apply all these models. Uh try, you know, try to use different metrics. Maybe uh we could also transform some variables, for example, transform the apps and see how that, you know, if if it helps uh our metrics or not. Okay. The only thing that if you transform the your target, uh you have to uh transform inverse the target, you know, to get your original metric. Okay, so if you load transform, eventually you're going to have to inverse that, you know, to get the original, you know, the, the original metric. Because if not, then you're going to have a very low metric, but it's from the log transform, not from the original value. Okay. And I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. Okay. So let me do the end here. Thank you very much.